What's up guys and gals, and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out a title called The First Dwarf. Uh, this is a playtest for the game that's gotten a little bit of coverage here and there about a post-apocalyptic dwarf who lands on a shattered isle with a mech. It seems to have a lot in common with something like the Rift Breaker, so that'll probably be my main point of comparison, having fiddled with it for a minute or two, but I'm mostly going in blind here just because it's a playtest, you know what I mean? Why get it up seven or eight hours into a playtest? Uh, so you can get this game. The playtest is, I think, accepting applications. I'll put the Steam link down below. On top of the that, you can take a look down there. You'll find a Discord and Twitch stream link just in case you wanted to hang out live. But let's not waste any more time talking. Let's go ahead and throw ourselves straight on into the game and see how this whole thing turns out. solid opening animation if I'm gonna be honest looks like it would fit right in on Cartoon Network or something like that whoever did it did a good job with it looks pretty rad thank heavens you're still breathing what was that storm it wasn't natural for sure next time maybe work on your landing technique yeah, it did seem a little bit bumpy. They didn't turn the turbulence light on. I didn't have myself, like, fastened on in or anything. All right, so what's going on over here? Repair the mech. Oh, I can just... Okay, there we go. Repair the mech. Yeah, get on in that groin. Everybody knows that the most functional part of the... The most functional part of the mech is the groin, all right? So if you got to hammer something, if you got to wrench something, make sure you do it around the weenus of the mech. All right. I will return to my mech. Cool. So I've got myself. I don't know what that blue goo is. Is that flammable? I feel like I need to be aware of things that are flammable. All right. So let's grab, I guess, all the spare parts off the ship that we possibly can. Oh my hammer! Good thing it didn't fall far. A little bit jarring on the jump out right there. I'm guessing maybe I was supposed to loot this stuff before I get inside of the mech. I don't know. A little bit of a jarring animation right there. All right. So we've got our Mech back up and running. There's some gears over here. Sure, that's solid dwarfish workmanship right there. Did I get everything so far? We still have something laying around. Oh, there's something laying over here. I can see it on the mini map. There we go. Let's grab the chimney right there. Good. We can look around. Some pieces might have landed elsewhere, but I think it's a good spot. Just smell the forest. Time to build a base. Okay. Oh, yeah, we've got, like, a build mode that's been enabled now. Well, first and foremost, we got to get all these pesky trees out of here. And then we need to select, like, a sexy spot, too. It looks like we have some kind of fuel gauge that was added onto the HUD right there that's going to indicate... I don't know if our mech can actually run out of it, though. Maybe there's, like, superpowers or something that the mech does, because general functionality doesn't really seem to affect the mech in any way from what I can tell. Can I mine rock from inside this thing, too? That chopping animation's pretty good right there. What happens if I hop out of the mech? There we go. I figured out how to do it. There's like a radio menu. What happens if I harvest this stuff over here? Okay, so those animations are a little bit more loosey-goosey. Those are probably going to need to be a little bit snappier, a little bit more impactful. Stuff like this. Test it out on a tree real quick. 
Yeah, same thing right there. It's a little bit slow and sluggish. It doesn't really imply the power of chopping because it's like a wrist flick. You know what I mean? You ever chopped down trees before? You ever you ever used an axe for long periods of time? I had to chop firewood in the winter time all the time when I was growing up as a kid. There's like a there's a wrist flick to it. There's a flickiness to it. But we are getting resources right now, which is good. Can I just hop back in right here? I can just hop back in. So we need to find a good spot to build up our base before we go into the control mode to get it done. It looks like there's something over here. What is this? My mech has stamina. Interesting. Extract mana. Oh, I've just got like a little booty pipe right there and I just like vacuum it straight on up, huh? Is the tank actually indicative of how full we are? I think it is. I think it's going up and down. That's a nice little detail. Got a little bit of like a uh, dead space vibe to it, I guess, with the contextual emergent UI. I usually prefer that things be done that way. I actually like it when games don't have a full-on UI. You can just look at your character and tell what your health is or tell what your mana is just by looking. Then again, having the little integer numbers right there and whatnot could be good too. Maybe I'll just build up. I figure we probably want like a clear open space, right? There's like an area where we've got room. So there's our main base right there. And it looks like we can rotate clockwise using the arrow keys. Gotcha. Where's the door on this thing? Looks like it's on the front right there. Okay, so we kind of want that to be facing like that way. There we go. Build that thing on up. It definitely kind of reminds me of Rift Breaker a little bit. It's definitely got that vibe to it. Start a new colony. Wood and stone. Or how they say uh, it. Sir, I believe wood, the phrase is rock stone. Finally, and stone. Wood dries or rots. Stone lasts for ages. You can build a shelter out of wood, but you cannot build a house without stone. Okay. So if I close that, is that like the only thing that I can build right there? So it looks like I need hull, roof, and rudder in order to make a main base. Oh, it wants me to find a quarry. All right, well, let's go find a quarry then. We'll hunt our quarry the best that we possibly can. Is that a pun? It kind of feels like a pun. That sort of looks like one right there. Place to dig. Wait a moment. Look at these scratches. Somebody has been here before us. A rock must have broken off. That's it. These are wild lands. We are the first to explore here. What's that sound? What is it? Okay, but you're a dragon, though. How about you get a little bit bigger and, like, breathe some fire on him or something? Do I have, like... Oh, I do have, like, a dodge. Okay. Yeah! Get worked on, son! Oh, do I have to, like, do something while... Oh, there's, like, a combo. Okay, I see what's going on right there. There's a little combo meter you gotta bust out. But this? I think it used to be a while later. What on earth happened to it? Interesting. Sure, but I think it was something even the songs are afraid to mention. Are dragons a musical people? I feel like there's so much cultural exchange that could be going on right now. I'm like, all right, so tell me a little bit about dragons. Well, it looks like we can cleave, too, if we get in tight enough. Yeah, there we go. Multi-tree combos. Alright, so it wants me to break down the monster nest. I, I went back to chopping trees because I'm a survival game aficionado, alright? Yeah, you've got like a four hit combo right there, but you've got to time it properly in order to get all the attacks to go off. I do like the degradation of the thing that I'm smacking, though. No, such things never appear one at a time. It's like an illness spreading through the body. It's only the beginning. Think so, huh? Yes, that's it. Now we can build a well on the mana spring. The colony buildings need mana just like my armor. All right. Is there anyone closer? Oh, there is. There's like one right over here. I'm going to get this one instead. This one's in my eye line. I prefer that very much. Sorry, I'm addicted to chopping down trees. Something about Fern Gully sent the wrong message to me, and I just got to kill all the trees right now in case ooze comes out of them and tries to kill us all. I get the wrong message from a lot of movies. I got the wrong message from, like, The Wolf of Wall Street. I got the wrong message from, like, that Medici TV show. Like, the message that I got was, like, if you have money, you get to just do whatever the hell you want and nobody can stop you. 
I think I have to build on this one. It won't let me build on the other one. So there's the mana spring right there. We go into like the control mode and build a mana well. And there's like little QE indicators right there. Gotcha. Okay, I didn't see those things down there. There goes the mana well. Do you think we're gonna make the mana into beer? All day, but I've sure had enough of cutting wood. It's high time to build a salt and power it up with a mana pipeline. All right. Yeah, I could do that. Is this the sawmill right here? That's the the mana pipeline. Okay. Oh, and there's our little sawmill right there. Okay, so let's hook that up real quick. Don't know what that's going to... It looks like it's 30 wood, 15 stone. All right. And then, like, we tab back. And is this thing, like, a conduit? Like, how does this work? Let's find out. Oh, okay. So, yeah, it's kind of like a con. It's a pipe. All right. I guess we'll just hook that in right there and hook that in right there. Stone mine in a quarry connected to the pipeline. You said you could dig stone all day. Work first. Play later. All right. We'll put that in right there. And do these pipes come with splitters by default? Like, let's say that I start from... Oh, they do. They come with splitters by default. Goody. All right. I thought I was going to have to engineer some kind of solution out of that. Or have, like, multiple wells or something. We still haven't prepared for unwanted guests. Expecting someone? All the filthiest things in this world like to come out at night. I can breathe fire, but I'm afraid you won't make it. We can use some defensive turrets. Let's hurry up, my poor, defenseless troop. Okay, okay, okay. But also, is there, like, an indicator of where the bad guys are going to come from? Because my my question that I'm levying right now is that my mana well is way over here, but my base is, like, back over here. Is this a thing that I can move around? Maybe I'll just migrate it. So good news, everyone. You can just move the base around. And it actually doesn't look like it really cost us that much. So I'll put it right here just so it's clustered together with everything else. And now we have access to a defensive tab. I've got walls out here, but it looks like I need to clear the space first before that's going to be useful to me. It looks like we can't build wherever there's a tree. So we're going to have to go like absolute mayhem on this thing. All right. Well, I got some of this stuff out of the way. So let's see if we can knock out and build. Nope, don't remove that. That would be an enormous mistake. All right, so let's see what's going on with these walls over here. That actually seems to work reasonably well. Not that difficult to set up. How far out do I have to go, though, in order to protect that place? I got to go pretty far out. So I think I'm going to have to chop down some more trees and then remove all these. So I was sort of thinking we just, like, land grab. That was kind of my initial thought, is that if I can get something like this over here out of the way, we can just run the wall from the mountain cliff in order to save on materials for having to go completely and totally around the base. That feels like the best start to me. It's been slow going, clearing out all the trees and whatnot, but I think we're about ready. And it looks like you can actually plot on the diagonals as well. Although, I don't know if... Oh no, my plan! My plan might be a failure, alright? It might be a resounding failure. We'll see if the monsters get through. Alright, well like a few little connectivity things. Like, I can't seem to get a wall in right there to cover that gap. I may have to like... Dist Let's try and deconstruct from this side. Maybe it'll work that way. I don't think it likes to connect, like, non-contiguous walls. Like, it likes you to do them all in one go for the snapping to function. Let's see, so if I go back in right there, what's going to happen here? I mean, that looks okay to me. It looks like we're secured and tied off. And then we need t defensive turrets. Okay. So we've got a defensive turret right there. Let's just put one to a corner for right now. And so we'll try to have one or two over by the gap over here too. I can't sprint when I'm inside buildy mode, so we'll have to figure it out as we go. Doesn't seem to mind over there. And then I think we've still got a gap that's behind the camp. 
that I'm going to have to sort out at some point, but I'm low on stone right now. So we got to wait for that trickle to come back on in. I do like the fact that they turn on a little headlight right there when nighttime arrives. Like, the game is just aware of that, so that's kind of cool. While we wait for stone to trickle in. Let's maybe just, like, run a wall back and over this way. Just to, just to cover us. I mean, there's still, like, a sizable gap over here, but I kind of need to be able to get out on that side of the base anyways, so why stress about it? And then this guy right here will just put you right there to help defend. Now that I've got that all set up, they want me to mana pipeline everything, which I will obviously do. We'll just run the mana pipelines around the edge of the base just to keep it all neat and tidy. All right, now I have effectively connected all of the things that they wanted me to connect. It won't. I will keep silent, but remember, it's an anxious kind of silence. All right, so I got to build up three houses now. Let's see if we can find a few more stone mines because something really bad is going on here. I can see that the monsters are coming out of this nest. It's not about the monsters. Something much worse. As if all magic in this place. We have to destroy the nest. Otherwise, the settlers don't stand a chance. Otherwise, nobody stands a chance. Where's the nest at? I didn't actually particularly see a nest. Purge the islands of monsters and their nests. Oh, they're like little lightning towers. Oh, yeah, dude. We're beefing over here. Okay, I didn't realize those were Tesla towers. That's pretty sick. We got a lot of monsters coming in, though. I'm a little bit worried about the generalized overall safety of my base. Hold on. Let's go back around and we'll help out with the defense real fast. We may need a little bit more oomph going out here. There we go. They look like frog monsters or something. I do like how they had like a little specialized attack animation right there, though. That was kind of sick how he rolled up in a ball. I'm going to get the timing of these down. Where's that monster nest at? It's over there. All right. I keep missing the first swing. It's faster and choppier than I thought. There we go. Perfect. All right. And I'm not just being punny about my axe. Oh, we got to go handle this. I like that lightning effect, though, too. That looked pretty good. All right, let's haul ass over here if my mech doesn't get too tired first because my mech has stamina. I'm just going to assume that that's like a heat gauge or something. All right, there's our monster nest. What's a dark stone do? Is it just like a crafting resource? Maybe. Waiting for my stamina to come back. There we go. And the clan council wants to send settlers here? I'm a bit worried as well. But oh, who are we to criticize the verdicts of the noble council? They must have had their reasons. Well, they might have. And we have our tasks. To dig a well. To build houses for the settlers. We'll get ripped apart by wild beasts. But at least we know where they are coming from. And we can destroy their nest. What's that? Dark stone. Concentration of dark magic. Maybe it would be better not to leave it here. You're right. Look that monster and stone are made from the same source. Oh my. Ow. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Apparently those stones were like some trampoline stone out there. They give you a little bit of a vertical boost. Alright, let's keep whittling away at rocks over here. There we go. All right. How do I fix this stuff? Can this stuff be fixed? Oh, I like how the planks get out. Or I like how the poles get out of alignment. It's kind of nice. Interesting little detail right there. I didn't even notice that the building was getting damaged along the way, so... Are we still under attack from somewhere? Oh, we are. Unfortunate. All right, let me go around the other side. Did you guys get him? Hopefully they got, I think they got him, but I just needed to check real fast. So I guess whenever the rain comes in is when the enemy is going to come around. Looks like they busted a wider hole in the fence over here too. Yeah, they did. And then they destroyed the building too. Okay. Let's go ahead and wipe that out real quick. Got to figure out how to bridge these gaps in the fence. Oh, they destroyed my stone mine as well. Okay, so they actually like come after you out here. Sucks that they snuck through, but that's the way she goes. All right, so we'll build another one over there. It's obviously going to cost us, but, like, the slow tick of resources, I think, is worth it. 
and then we'll grab that right there connect that on in there we go now we have stone again i was kind of wondering why my stone wasn't ticking upwards apparently there were threats that i did not realize we need four more stone if we want to bang out these houses i'll probably keep them up against the rock bluff over here might be safer that way with all the attacks and whatnot coming on in and let's see what's up with these houses though so we got a house right there did these need to be hooked up to the mana as well I think there's a strong chance that they may. Okay. We'll put one in right there. I'm going to go deal with this tree real fast. I don't know if they're regrowing or what. I feel like I'm doing an awful, awful lot of just general gardening right now. I, mean, I suppose that's a big part of building a colony. We need to make it safe for rock and stone. Put that in right there. Nice world building, too, while you're running around. Like, there's some cool environmental objects here that I'm definitely interested in going and exploring and effectively seeing what they are. I need a few more houses. I prefer to keep them like lined up over here just to make things easier. There we go. That should make life simpler. And then we just gotta get this hooked up to the conduit. Now, I think we just need to run conduits. I'm just gonna daisy chain everything because every good electrical engineer will tell you that daisy chaining the hell out of everything is factually the most efficient way to build any society. No deadly frost. No. Do you know how many have said this before? Generation after generation. It's good to finally understand them. Let's go. What do you want me to build now? Oh, I can get a water well? Cool. Do I just put that wherever? Does it matter? Yeah, we'll probably put this over here by the housing then. There we go. Oh, that's got to be hooked up to the mana well. Oh, so we're like highly as a society. We are kind of like dependent on the mana stream. For something to drink, you gave us plain water, you twit. For that, we will go to your well and right there, without much ado, take a... Examine an ancient mysterious tower. Well, the only one of those that I've seen is up on the hill. So let's go take a look up on the hill and see what's going on there. I think our defenses should be good for where they're at right now, I hope. Although I did find gates in the defensive menu. So slapping one of those bad boys down, probably a good idea. And then seeing if we can maybe connect that over to there. And then connect that over to there. There we go. We've actually got like an official looking township now. Ah, the destruction of nature. It brings a tear to an old dwarf's eye. What is nature there for except to be burnt into charcoal and then used to fuel industry? I'm almost certain that this is one of the ancient Escoim ports. These half buildings, half machines, guided air. Look, Escoim ruins. They have stood here for thousands of years. Look here. This looks like some Escoim. Blueprint of some kind of thrust engine. Like I know how to improve my armor using this technology so that it can jump much higher. We have to go to the workshop to see if it works. It will be a waste of resources. Okay. I'm going to keep just chucking up the hill right here to see if we can get to this magic tower. Oh, look, dude, there's a doggy. It is a slightly tainted fox. All right, who drug their taint across this fox? It's disrespectful of nature. You're gonna get in trouble with PETA. Something's not right here. The tower is saturated with dark magic. This crystal is the source of it. Let's take it off. All right, let's grab this crystal off the front of here. All the gearing looks good, but we need a navigation stone for the port to function correctly. 
navigation stone. I read about it. Let's search the crash site. Perhaps the navigation stone is still there, buried among the rubble. Ah! Ow. Near the airship. Dwarves used such stones in their airships, haven't they? Yes. Ooh, that's why we are going to the crash site. Does it hurt my buildings when I land on top of them with my giant robo ass? I guess not. Let's go check the crash site for whatever this thing is that they're prompting me for. Crash trail ends here. Navigation stone is not here. It must have fallen off somewhere else. We must find it. I have an idea where it might be. Okay. There we go. Oh, dude, I can play as the dragon. That kind of reminds me of Jet Force Gemini, like when you would take the little drone and it could go through different little areas and whatnot. Oh, it breathes fire, too. I'm a flamethrower. This view has no comparison to the closed spaces of the Great Dwarven Library. So we've actually got, like, multiple character interactions here, which could be interesting for, like, puzzle solving or other things like that. All right. Mm, there's a ruin down in here, too, though. We can explore. Once you're airborne, it's actually a lot more visually stimulating, too. They're playing around with some interesting ideas here. I kind of dig what they got going on. It's like a little bit heavier. That's actually what I would recommend is for the base building stuff over there, like repairing walls and everything. I would take a look if I was the developers at the Rift Breaker. Almost everything about that game is functionally perfect. Like, when it comes to UI design and just quality of life, get all that into here, because quality of life is really the only thing that I've noticed so far. Everything else seems to be animated reasonably well. The voice acting seems to be okay. Uh, it wants me to put that in there. All right, I'll go back up here and put that in there. But most of the things here all seem to be good. Environmental design looks good. Lighting looks good. Animations could use a little tuning up on the dwarf end. But all the mech animations and the dragon animations seem to be pretty good. So I think they're off to a pretty good start from what I've seen so far. All right, let's slot this bad boy in here and see what it does for Let us. Let me get the navigational stone. It fits. Did it do anything? Nothing. Just as I expected. Wait a minute. The Eskoim also used mana. Let's connect a pipe and see what happens. Okay. I've just been farming resources this entire time, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Was that in the settlement menu? Yeah, there it is right there. Although we are going to have to defend this thing, which is the part that actually makes my booty a little itchy. It might be kind of a, a pain. Let the mana flow. There's light. What do you know? It worked. Well, our first colony is ready. We can send a raven and wait for the colonists. I didn't even know I was going to have colonists. So let's go ahead and do precisely that. So it's got this building tagged over here. Send the raven. Send it away. Have a good trip. I can't believe it. I hope he succeeds. He will succeed. I believe in it. The first colony is finished. This is just the beginning. Get a little bit of redundancy right there. Meet the arriving dwarves. Well, something just loaded because the frame rate just hitched. So it definitely it loaded some kind of texture or something. Oh, and the gate has a toggle on it, too. Like, I control whether it opens or closes or not. It's kind of cool. Although, it doesn't seem to want to reopen now. I'll just make sure I drop back down into my base. Maybe it, op it only opens and closes from the inside. I, I closed it from the inside, then ran out. So, it's possible that's the way it functions. We have greeted the dwarves, and they have arrived. Now isn't this a nice place? I know, just a moment and it will be ready. All right, so we've got a new building that it wants me to put in called a workshop. It looks like we gotta find a good place for it though. It may not necessarily be like a universal placement type deal. 
Oh, it just tacks onto the side. It's a good thing I noticed that. I would have. I the only reason I noticed that is because I walked by it and because it was tagged on the mini map. It's like a drunk without a cup. It's a nasty way of putting it. Well, you've got a point. All right, so inside the workshop, it looks like we can actually fabricate things that we want here. So we've got high pump capacity, Esquim technology, install, install the high jump technology. So it's this Esquim technology right here. Let's go ahead and knock that out. Simple and brilliant. Why did none of us ever come up with this? Look, I can jump so high I can catch birds in flight. How on earth could we find something like this in Esquim ruins? I have no idea. Maybe the construction of the armor is based on Esquim ideas. Or maybe something really strange is going on. Mm, I think we're about to be under attack. The little stormy boys came back. Yeah, we are about to be under attack. So that's a little bit of an issue. Huh, the gate toggle's not working for me, so I don't know if it's bugged or whatever, but there we go. Now the enemy, they were stuck because there was no way into our base, but now they're headed over here, so we'll square off with them on this side. They're attacking on the corner down here. A little inconvenient. There we go. Just make sure you fight inside the range of the turrets. The rest of it doesn't really matter. Just capitalize on the fact that we have turrets. There we go. Bury that guy real fast. There's another one inside the base attacking the mana well. Another one bites the dust. I wonder if that's that lair up there that was closed just a minute ago. Do they, like, reopen with time? There we go. Light them up. I think we're going to need some more defensive towers, too. It seems to me like that might be an adaptation we want to develop here. I don't think I hit Chunky hard enough to hold off a wave all by my lonesome. All right, let's go find this lair. It's got to be up top. It does appear to be at the top of the up on. So let's go ahead and wipe that out. Oh, they're fighting back now. That's how it's going to go, huh? They're tough. They got a chin on them. Without my turrets adding supplementary damage to this whole thing, I'm now regretting all of my decisions to haphazardly launch myself off of cliffs and drain down my HP. I actually don't know how to heal myself right now. I should probably figure that out. There are, like, berries and stuff around, but somehow I don't feel like that's going to help out with the mech. I probably have to hop out and work on it, like, Mad Max style on the Nintendo. And I think this should be, like, the last burst of damage that brings it down. There we go. That's all nice and finished off. If I hop out... Like, let's say I hop out. Can I fix the mech? I can. There we go. So you actually got to hop out and do maintenance on the thing. So far, I dig it. It's a little bit loosey-goosey. It's a play test. You know, there's still rough edges that need to be smoothed on out, but I can see the promise here, especially if you're a big Rock and Stone Dwarf fan like I am. Uh, my name is Splattercat. I'll leave something to the imagination here. If you want to check it out, go look at the play test. Go sign up. Go help out with the development. Uh, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we were messing around with First Dwarf. Tomorrow, we'll be messing around with something different. For now, it's time for me to beg my leave. I'll catch you all tomorrow with something hot and fresh up off the indie skillet. But that's all I got for you. Bye, folks.